It's 17 degrees and 8.59 here at CHHA 16.10 a.m. And, yeah, it's September 11th. But you know what? I decided to have a really different kind of a program today. Something happy. I mean, in, in studio tonight, I have Mina Kehoe, who was crowned by Toronto Star Magazine as a member of Canada's royal family of puppetry, living in a weird and wonderful world, and uh, certainly could use a little bit more of that. And she's going to be uh, joined uh, with her alter ego, Dr. Beryl Freud, a little later in the program. So we'll be uh, learning more about these two ladies, uh, and uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, fun, some whimsy and fun and some laughter. We're here in studio tonight with the wonderful Nina Keo. And, you know, not everybody would maybe know that name because often it's uh, related to uh, a hand in a puppet. (laughs) Is that true? Like, Nina, you know, it's like everybody knows the characters, but they don't know the character behind the character. (laughs) So tonight we're going to learn about the character. And I'm so looking forward to to talking to you and uh, finding more about... Oh, about your fabulous career, which lasted a good over 40 years. Yeah. A solid gig. <laughs> and you're only, you started at two years old, so this is amazing. <laughs> not not far off. You started 11, and I'm thinking, yeah. you know, the friendly giant, what a thing, you know, take your kid to work day. I mean, <laughs> that, tell me how John and Linda Keogh took their kid to work one day, and look what happened. The rest is history. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I... I grew up in a household with hundreds of puppets that my parents had built, Mm -hmm. and they had been part of the early CBC um, children's uh, uh, programming starting in about 1953 or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they had done a number of shows like Maggie Muggins and Old Testament Tales, and then the Friendly Giant came along, and they. by that time I was 11, and I'd already had some experience with them. And they needed extra puppeteers, uh, because in in those days, the Friendly Giant had would do a half-hour special, yeah. and it would be a story. And so they'd do it with other puppets besides um, Jerome and um, Rusty. Rusty. Chicken in a bag. I yeah, love that. Chicken I love, in a bag. I yeah. love him. Rooster in a bag. Rooster, rooster. <laughs> yes, he had a little, lovely little uh, crown. There yes. Is. So uh, that was the beginning. I went in, and that was basically the beginning of of uh, some work I did at the CBC. Then there was a show called Razzle Dazzle. Oh, Raz- you were on Razzle Dazzle? I was. I my dad was Razzle Howard Dazzle, the Turtle. Razzle yeah. Dazzle. Hold I that love tiger. My Hold that tiger. I love tiger. that. Yes, I yeah. like to watch that. So, uh, again, where they needed extra puppeteers, I'd go on and do that. And then in 1968, I started doing Friendly Giant uh, every week. And mm-hmm. my parents basically left uh retired very young so what they do after they retired though they could the, you can't re- puppeteers don't really retire did they have they a- didn't really they they ended up in an artist colony in mexico called san miguel de allende ah and uh lived there for about 30 years well, and that was interesting for our, our, our listening uh public there are a lot of people down there a lot of canadians down there a lot of canadian artists down there and um, so, yes, they did uh, Garcia Lorca plays in Spanish. Oh, and wow. my father became the um, technical director of the Angelo uh, Peralta Theater there. Seriously? Yeah. So they, they continued to work for sure. And puppetry, marionettes, very yes. big in the Mexican culture. Oh, yes. Huge. I mean, that, that's, that, and, and, and such fabulous work that they do down there. Yes, absolutely. and we've got uh, we've got the Dia Dia del Muerte coming, and that's the uh, November first, you know, uh, coming up soon. So there's going to be a lot of uh, that kind of thing. Yes. Wow. So your parent, they also did they not also start um, a, a, a puppetry a puppet theater, the Canadian Puppet Theater, back in ninety six. That was before they left for Mexico though and retired. Oh, oh yeah, way back. They they actually started that in uh, I think it was over nineteen sixty sixty one. And we lived in the country, and they were uh, commuting to the CBC in Toronto. Right. But they wanted to have a puppet theater, so they built a a huge puppet theater. We had a circus tent, a permanent circus tent. Oh, wow. And people would come out from Toronto and park in our... We had 50 acres, and they'd come out and park there. There goes the neighborhood. There goes the neighborhood, (laughs) yeah, actually. (laughs) 
It's true because we were surrounded by a lot of farmers mm. and we were in a rural area. And I'm sure they thought, oh, those weird people from the city come out here and what are they doing? Well, when they saw the circus tent go up, they thought, oh, okay, the carnival's in town <laughs> yes. for a few days and they're using their space. Okay. Yeah. But when it never went down, right. uh-oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, you you must know, have been loved. You must have been loved. I, yeah. I think they, yeah, they, they got used to us and realized that we were a benign lot. <laughs> Did someone try to come over and teach you how to build a barn? That's not the barn. <laughs> it's lovely, but it's not the barn. No, it's no. not. We took a barn down and kept the foundation and, uh, and so. built the tent. <laughs> yeah. Good for yeah, you. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Getting back to actually to Jerome and, and Rusty, you know, what great characters. I mean, Jerome was quite the intellect. He, he, I think he was sort of a pseudo-intellect, you know, yes. and, and, and Rusty was sure. there to keep him on the straight and narrow and uh, yeah. and, and friendly would just humor them all, you know, and he was, he was, he was the perfect parent, you know. <laughs> yes, he was. He was, uh, it was a great trio, the, the three of them, and Rod Connie Bear did both Rusty and Jerome, and he'd flip from one voice to another, just... The deep you know, to the high, that must have been such hard. Ease. Oh, yeah, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and, great and, and humor. I just, I saw a clip of Rusty playing an accordion there. That was amazing. Yes. And, and he always pulled the little books out, and yeah. you know, it was his little book bag. And I was talking to someone today, and we were talking about, you know, when she started to whistle the da-da-da-dee-da-da, you early know, one the early one morning theme for... Uh, the friendly giant, yeah. and she says, "My goodness, she's remember when we were kids. Like the 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 programming used to be so gentle, yes, not as not frenetic. It's she says like now she's got little kids, and she said now it's like you know all the kids need this really frenetic do 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 go 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 kind yeah. of programming. And but we did we fared very well with that. I think we did, and uh, friendly was fifteen minutes long. You know he would Attention read a span. story and. You know, he'd read a story in a gentle, slow way, and yeah. children would sit around and watch. And they had not been exposed yet to what I think Sesame Street introduced was this quick-paced uh, kind of thing. I think you're right. And, and Fraggle uh, Rock and all those other things. From there on, yeah, sort of. I think, uh, yeah. So Mr. Dress-Up was another example of a show that was, you know, slow-paced, just ah, like yeah. having a great person in your... In and he'd go house. up to his, his tickle trunk and he'd right. so I'm going to be a troll today. Right. And he'd, put on, and, and, it wouldn't, and, he'd and he'd show and kids how they could use something simple at home. Right. and Use and, their imagination. Yeah. And all his art and his crafts. Beautiful. And, and the puppet characters, of course. So Yeah, and, and they were simple adventures. There's nothing complex, nothing worldly and and things that kids could grasp and not not be you know overpowered by it did, did you think the kids right. are a little too have too much stimulus like uh, like too too That's many the way ideas I felt. coming yeah. i think it's probably contributes to some attention deficit disorder <laughs> you sure. know that you're just you you just need constant stimulation and um yeah you know if that's the pace they get used to then that's what they need and want so or do they really need it and do they, yeah, they I only don't... they only want it because it's because it's what's being fed to them well, you know, many years ago, I had a discussion on, uh, I think it was Studio 2 at TVO, and we were talking about whether the Friendly Giant would fare well today. Mm -hmm. And I, the person who uh, was was talking against that had been a TVO, a, a children's programming um, head at TVO. Right. And he didn't think that it would go. And I said, I don't agree with you. I think oh. that Friendly Giant would be quite successful now. And a lot of people, especially people yeah. who watched it themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, there's such a nostalgia about uh, so many of the shows that, that I that I did, that I think people would love to have their children. My watch. children were raised on them. My, well, my children are now thirty-three and thirty, and right. they watch. I think they were the last generation that really got to enjoy those programs. Yeah, and you know the stories. I, it, I, and the and the little the little scenes and stuff like that. Yes. And that Mr. Rogers had that going for him too, mm -hmm. you know, and he'd go over to the uh, where the king was that were going over there and, right. and, and he and that, and he used to say, I like you just the way you are. Right. And and same with friendly, you know, putting the little chairs out and saying Here's a rocking chair for one, and 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 for two to curl up in, you know. And it was it gave 
children that comfort that they needed that may not have had at home. It gave them a little yeah. moment of tranquility and peace and security. I, I really do believe that. You I know? do too. Loved, I, I love I loved Bob. Um, he, beautiful, beautiful guy, you yeah. know? Yes, he was. I, I didn't know him personally. You did. But, yes. But as a, a child, that must have been quite an experience. He must have been Uncle Bob, you know, or he must have been a very sweet <laughs> person in your life. He was. But uh, yeah, but you also you went on. Uh, bah, wow, you 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 really you you've done more than puppetry. You've been uh, you've been a host mm-hmm. uh, for Drop In. Now t- tell me a little bit about that. When did that When did that start? Was that well? This is in the late sixties. Yeah, um, I was a guest on a show called The New Majority, which was about you know people uh, twenty one and over were now the new majority of right. the population. So and this so- wasn't a tweeny teeny show. Uh, no, this was uh, for young. older, yeah, young young adults, whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. and so anyway, I came on to talk about puppets and the history of puppets and dolls. Right. And the uh, producer saw me and he said, I'd really like you to uh, audition for a, a new series that's coming up. And it was called Dress Rehearsal. Mm-hmm. And so I did. And I had to audition with his six children sitting there all firing questions at me and all this stuff. Anyway, I got How the old were his kids. I got the gig. <laughs> well, they were all young. Wow. You know, youngish. Oh, good. Um, and so Dress Rehearsal was a show that was kind of an after school show mm-hmm. at around 4.30. So yeah, again, young people. People, not ki- not little kids. No, no. And uh, so I did that, and then that ultimately became the show called Drop In, and mm-hmm. it was five days a week across Canada, and um, we we had a wonderful time. We got to interview all kinds of people and people who have now become famous who were just starting out then, yeah. and. Um, and got to do skits and uh, travel in can- within Canada mm-hmm. and uh, go to Stratford and get a fencing lesson from the, the fencing director. Fabulous. There. In- you know, interview some of the, did a lot of interviewing, which I absolutely loved and um, met a lot of wonderful people. It was, it was an exciting time. Nice yeah, to be in front sure. of the camera than behind the table and under it. <laughs> it's a little easier. <laughs> no, you weren't drinking everything. <laughs> it's a little easier sitting at the table instead of being under the table. Yes, uh, but I I felt very comfortable in front of the camera and uh, sure. So I I just really enjoyed it a lot. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more with you, Nina Keo. Uh, premier puppeteer of Canada and abroad and not that you are abroad but abroad away (laughs) (laughs) truly a great broad and she's going to have another great broad joining her later uh, Dr. Beryl uh, Freud oh that's going to be some fun so don't don't touch that dial we're going to go to break now and we come back we're going to have a lot of fun on this 9-11 day we're going to have some fun You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water.
<laughs> and that's uh, Fiddlesticks, Love is All Around, and a uh, great group here in Toronto. One of those wonderful artists that we love to promote here on CHHA 1610 AM. And if you want to go to Instagram and on Twitter and to our CHHA 1610 AM pages, uh, you'll get to see a great pic of uh, my guest tonight, Nina Koikio, and uh, her alter ego, uh, Dr. Beryl Freud. So me. <laughs> but uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm here with Nina Keo, who is an incredible uh, artist, performer, puppeteer. You make puppets. You, you build puppets. Mm-hmm. It's not just make you, but you create them. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> build them. Build from, them. Yeah, build, we usually say build. Build, yeah, building because there's a lot of foam involved. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> foam and fabric, foam and fabric. Yeah. So, what gives you the ideas to put these uh, wonderful characters together? Like, where do you get? Like, you you had one that you did for a medical. Um, uh, you you take a theme. Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay, so this uh, this particular little medical item was is a speculum, yeah, and uh, y- you know used for uh, speculum, right. women internals, yeah. and um, so I looked at it, and they're made out of plastic now. They used to be metal, now they're plastic, and, and women like, don't like them. It's it's not a great it's not no, a great thing. Women don't so like them. So you've got to make it friendly. You got to make it friendly. Got to make it fun. <laughs> so I'm looking at this thing, and I'm going, this looks like a duck. You know, it's, oh, it's yeah, got, yeah, you it's know, got those... it's, it's adjustable and it looks like there's a bottom beak that goes yeah, up yeah, and yeah, down. Yeah. So I thought, okay, so I asked my doctor if I could have a couple of them and she gave them to me and I took, took it home and I put two ping pong ball eyes on it and, and eye, you know, oh pupils gosh. and some fuzzy hair at the top. And then I brought it back to her and I said, okay, this is for you. She put it on the ceiling of her. <laughs> I was going to say that would definitely room. make people laugh when they're going to have have that yeah internal <laughs> exactly so um so i've done that for a couple of doctors you know who really just <clears throat> like the idea of having some humor it's nice to meet a doctor who has a good sense of humor <laughs> yes it is <laughs> but you, you, you but you are also you're an artist as well you do you've done some beautiful fabric uh, work and what what made you sort of just go and go off and do the artist thing because you you took a break mm hmm was, when was that? When in around two thousand, I did I did a commercial, and I just uh, I think I just had enough of the the business, and um, I wanted to take a break. And I was mm-hmm. living outside of Toronto, and I had a great studio there. And and I just uh, thought I'm just going to paint. So Good in two thousand, I created uh, the Keo Studio and had a gallery in our home, and uh, I just. Where was that located? It? I I think I must have gone by it. I don't. Where were you? It's located? out at uh, Warkworth, which is northeast of Coburg. Okay. Yeah, north of Co- north of Coburg, sort of near Brighton. Okay. Um, nice area. <laughs> nice area. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all farmland and. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, so, and there are a lot of artists and writers there, and actors. There are so who live many people now. who are living at the, you're right, it's yeah. a big artist community. Yeah, and, and more and more all the time. It's uh, snowballing. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, it's quite wonderful. So that's what I did, and then um, until recently, and uh, and then I had another gallery in Newfoundland. Oh, Newfie, so, that's a, on the rock. Yeah, on the rock. So, so how, how long were you there for? Almost six years. Wow. Yeah. So went out there in 2008 and uh, was so incredible. Uh, it was a little fishing village on the very north northern part of Newfoundland, oh. about two or three islands off of the main island of Newfoundland. Um, and we it, it, what a fabulous place for an artist, a photographer, for creative people. Um, sure. Just amazing. I just think it's my favorite place in the world. Did you find you were you, the creative juices were flowing more? Did you find you were opening Absolutely. up more? And uh, so what happened there? What kind of journey was that? I think I found my stuff becoming a lot more whimsical and colorful. Mm. And uh, there was a joy about living there and the ocean and the the quiet. And, I mean, it was just so amazing. I know I would just go and stand at the edge of a cliff across from our house, and I would just kind of scream with excitement. And, oh, I can't believe I'm living in a travel poster. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would love to go to Newfoundland. I hear it's gorgeous. And they have a lot of moose. 
There are moose, yes, and you have to be careful of them on the highway. Yeah, a lot of people lot. don't drive at night on certain roads. Mm-hmm. Uh, the moose did not come over to our island. They, no. w- they, they didn't come over there, so that was not something we would see on our particular island, but you'd certainly see uh, all kinds of other things, wild mink, and, of wow. course, we'd have seals on our beach. Mm. Um, the sea glass was unbelievable. Oh, I bet. Oh, my goodness. That well, was fun. Our mutual friend, Errol, used to, to collect glass. From oh, did the he? Water. Yes. Yeah. Not sea, well, from the Lake Ontario, but yeah, the yeah. sea glass must have been fabulous. Yeah. Did yeah. you do anything creative with it? Or? I did. I would create um, countertops with sea glass. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, you know, glue it down and put grout in and, um, you know, make all kinds of things yeah. with the sea glass table t- tabletops and little coffee tables and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so it, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful place. The people yeah. were very friendly. The food is great. It was where I learned to finally eat fish. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fi- I, I'm the fish and chips girl, and that's it, you know. Yeah, that's me too. But I, yeah. mean, I actually ate cod. Cod is such a nice uh a nice fish. It's Maybe when it's mild. fresh and not, not in a box yeah. that's frozen and tastes and smells fishy. And people, you know, the local fishermen would bring them, bring us tons of cod to our house and, you know, just really lovely people too. So Well, yeah. And, and actually, that's an interesting, we, we can kind of segue into what those lovely people did on this day you know, yes, in nine eleven, <clears throat> and and of course we have the musical, you know, and uh, that yes. came out of that and come from come away, from away, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. And uh, let's let's do a little shout out, a big shout out to the to people of Newfoundland who a big were, shout out to the Ganderites. The Gander, yes, they opened their hearts, their homes, their and that uh, to, to bring yes. all those planes into that 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 airport, you know, and and so many people. And mm-hmm. I I've talked to some of the Ganderites. I didn't. I was uh, probably about an an hour and a half north of Gander, but certainly mm-hmm. met a number of Gander people who had taken people in on that yeah. day. And uh, I think it's just so wonderful that uh, our Toronto guy, uh, Michael Rubinoff, um, mm-hmm. created this um, or came up with the concept. And, uh, it's a great workshop piece, just oh, amazing. And it opened in Seattle. Which was very interesting on the other side of the yeah and yeah and uh, and then of course the I think the uh, the premier in Toronto or in Canada was in Gander for mm-hmm. those people, so it's pretty moving the whole thing. Yeah. As soon as that play, I went to see it in Toronto. As soon as that play opened, I started crying. I don't think I stopped. Just crying. gives me chills to think about it. Yeah, you know. yeah, and so yeah, today is uh, is that day and. Uh, it's we'll never ever forget this never Uh, the day that it happened i I remember just the silence you talk about the silence in newfoundland but there was silence in toronto not a plane flying not a car hardly moving it was Mm -hmm. like it was surreal it was really unbelievable like every and everybody you looked at any you knew what people were thinking you didn't have to say a word everybody everybody had the same mind Absolutely. Well, we this mind has to go to break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're coming back, and we're going to be meeting a very special lady, Dr. Beryl Freud. Uh, your alter ego, I understand. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> that will be. We'll find that out right after break. But okay. who knows? I mean, only Dr. Beryl Freud will be able to tell us for sure. So. <laughs> Stay tuned and uh, we'll go to break. (laughs) You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. Oh yeah, two heads are better than one. And uh, sometimes our head is on our hand. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're listening to CHA 1610 AM, and uh, it's uh, 9.33, and the time is ticking away. And uh, I wanted to um, it, thank you very much, Dr. Beryl Freud, for uh, for joining us today. And uh, it's a real honor to have you. You're quite distinguished. Oh, am I? <laughs> yes, oh, thank yes. you very much. It's a silver hair. Ah. Yes, uh, I'm a silver fox. Yes, I heard once you had flaming red hair. What happened there? I did. I just decided to go au naturel. 
Ah, like the rest of us old gals. Well, good yeah, for you. Yeah, I know a lot of the young women are dyeing their hair gray and silver, you know. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Did you find that rather unusual? You see a young face with this silver gray hair. It's kind of weird, Well, isn't you're it? looking at one. Oh, there I am. <laughs> I, I, my apologies. <laughs> oh, Dr. Freud. So you are, I understand, are you a psychiatrist? No, I'm not. I'm a psychologist. There's a, psycho- a big difference. There is. One gives drugs and one gives advice. Or one takes drugs and one gives advice. I don't know. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) A psychologist. So, you know, well, that's wonderful. So uh, you've had a lengthy career then? I have. I'm in my 80s. Oh, wow. You're still going strong? I've had a lot of famous uh, patients, too. Who, who have your patients been? Well, I have, are you allowed to disclose that, I, I though? Is that kind of like, no? I am not allowed to disclose, but they know who they are. Mm-hmm. I have one named Joyce. Oh. Um, I have one named um, Sandy, and then there's <laughs> Diana, and then there's uh, you know, Rex. And, but I'm not allowed to say their no, names. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think no. so. And, you know, I, I do talk about mental health, and that's a very important co- conversation to have. And uh, people aren't talking about mental health that much, uh, and they need to. They need to talk about if they have a mental illness or a condition. They, I, what do you think about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I think we need to have more transparency. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for us to all talk about ourselves and what issues we have, and you find out you're not alone. That's true. That's absolutely true. Well, you know, People can help themselves, but then I'm out of a job. That's true. Well, you know, it takes a long time for people to find a good psychologist nowadays. They're not around very much. No, so but I'm here, and uh, you can find me online. Oh, how 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 we I'm on you? Facebook, Dr. You- Barrel's Fan Club. Ah, Dr. Barrels. Dr. Barrels Fan Club on Facebook. I love it. I love it. You know what? I think that's the best accessibility. I think it's transparent and accessible. So you're an easy gal to get in touch with. I, but I'm not an easy gal. You're not an easy gal. Not Good. easy. No, 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 no. But no. I am uh, accessible. <laughs> well, I'm not. Anyway, you know. <laughs> Gosh, this studio is so far north, you know, I get a nosebleed when I go north of St. Clair. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the old uh, the old um, shoreline for Lake Ontario, so I can understand that. Oh, yes, so you okay. live downtown. Yes, then. that's right. You know, when I was uh, young, the shoreline was at St. Clair. Yes, I imagine that that is absolutely the truth. It's just, yeah, I understand. Yes, so you understand, yes. <laughs> so you would live live north of it. Oh, my goodness, that's almost like pre uh, antediluvian days. But um, I know antediluvian. <laughs> She's my aunt. Oh, my goodness, yes. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't know you. Well, you know, are you a grandmother? Am I a grandmother? Yes. No. I've been married a number of times, but I don't have any grandchildren. Okay. So you're a mom? Yeah? Uh, no. No, you're not. That's I just wonder if you probably ever... don't have any grandchildren. That's, uh, well, they, well, no, you can not have grandchildren. still have children. Yes, but I don't have very... children, so that's probably why I don't have grandchildren. Oh, well, there you go. I Does just, that make sense? It makes total sense I'm to me. I'm just a sing. you know, I'm a single gal right now. Uh huh. Yeah. So you're, so you're, so you're, 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 um, uh, do, do you use the, the, the social media sites to, do you ever try to, those you're dating talking sites? about the dating sites. Yeah, I am. I, it's, a, it's rather an indelicate question, I know, to ask of such a It's not indelicate doctor. at all. I think that it's very important to talk about that as well because, you know, it's what people are doing these days. Yes, it is very modern. Yes. But yeah. I have a lot of competition, you know. Mm-hmm. Because I'm looking at men who are like 50. Well, someone like you who's so established and and so intelligent and beautiful, actually. I, you have a very good look, I, I'm telling you. You like my glasses? I love your glasses. I think they're tops. I think they, I love Thank the you. shape. It's beautiful. And you're you're rather buxom and you know, you you you've got you you've got you're, yeah. you're a shapely lady, you Thank know. Thank you. Some someone's going to going to just just love you. Somebody called me Zoftig. Zoftig, that's exact. Zoftig is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, nothing wrong with Zoftig. Yes, it's just voluptuous. Voluptuous, that's right. The voluptuous Dr. Beryl Freud. 
did you know, Beryl, you know, what I wanted to do is the reason I was asking you about the mother and the grandmother thing is I was wondering if any of your kids ever, ever watched uh, that great program that um, that Nina Kehoe did uh, a while back. And uh, it was... Um, it was it was a fabulous program and 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 uh she was <laughs> and do you think i can remember the name of it hello it was uh i know what you mean do you know the one i'm talking about i know about? but i don't have any children so they didn't watch it oh, but come on, the name of it was today's special that's right i knew you knew it you see i had a feeling you were watching it, it had yourself. puppets on it though and i hate puppets no but i think it was in it wasn't it in a department store barrel yes it was it was in a department store and it was after night when they sort of closed down and everyone sort of came to life and did their thing like there was Muffy. Muffy was an amazing That's right. That you, was Muffy. Do you, do you know Muffy? Um, you might want to talk to her about that. Oh, her. Oh, her. <laughs> Who's her? Her. Nina. Nina could probably tell you more. Oh, about that. Okay, well, you know what? Thank you, Dr. Beryl Freud. I'm sure we're going to hear you chiming in. Please don't hesitate to chime in whenever you want. Oh, I uh, will. Don't worry. I'm sure you will. So, um, Nina, thank you very much, uh, you know, for uh, <laughs> giving Dr. Freud some space because she she's a, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm out in space right now. <laughs> you don't want to let her go on too long, though. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I hear you. But, okay, so, yeah, that was a great program. I, I used to watch it with my kids. I loved yeah. it, and I loved Muffy. Yeah, Muffy. Well, that was my character. And, yeah. um But, you know, Muffy had to speak in rhyme all the time. That's right. So it was, uh, you know. <laughs> did you find yourself doing it outside of your character? I did actually. Seriously? Yeah, I did, and it was it was just kind of weird because you get used to speaking in that kind, you know, at that that kind of. Can you it, give us a little a little bit? Because I love Muffy. Oh, <clears throat> um, well, I have a friend named Joyce, and she's got a hell of a voice. <laughs> I don't know if I can say how. They haven't rung the bell. <laughs> Where's the 30-second cue? <laughs> it's all right for you to do. <laughs> See, anybody can do it. There you go. <laughs> but we had five writers. <laughs> we had actually five writers no, on our show. It was a charming, charming show. It was It was absolutely, um, it, it really brought you into the story. They did such great things, you know. It, the the, the storylines were great. They were great music. Yeah, uh, the music. and Dancing. The... You know, we had Jeff Hislop was our choreographer. And oh, yeah. One of I our know. stars. As Jeff the Mannequin and Noreen Virgin and Bob Dermer as Sam Crenshaw and uh, wonderful cast, great we, Canadian actors, dancers, yes, performers. We had a lot of interesting people on. I got to sing as Muffy with Oscar Peterson. No kidding, what'd you sing? Yeah, I sang Three Blind Mice oh, with a great jazz, you know, accompanying me. Oh. By the great Oscar Peterson, we had Karen Kane on. We had oh. we had uh, so many interesting people. Sharon Lois and Bram came on as our guests, and that's introducing the children to so much culture. Yes, I don't think it's not being done the same way. Well, you know, it's like Friendly Giant, where yeah, the Bob there. would introduce uh, classical music and jazz, mm -hmm. and that was the other thing. I mean, the it, jazz cats in the yeah the the, the kittens and the, the kittens, raccoons. Yeah. And that the was raccoons, yeah. one of the thrills of my life, really, was um, as a puppeteer, I get to meet so many people and work with with really neat people. I worked with uh, Peter Ustinov, who was, a, oh. of course, a very famous actor no back in the day. And we, I did eight short films with him with puppets in the year of the child in 1976. Mm. And I believe that this film was entered into one the very first um, Toronto Film Festival before it was called the TIFF, which is on now. Um, and on The Friendly Giant, I remember being able to play the during our rehearsals, playing with Hey Good Hardy and, and um, Peter Appleyard. And oh. we had all these, you know, Guido Basso and Mo Kaufman and all these great Look what the kids were exposed musicians. to. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, I, another, uh, and Mr. Rogers used to do that too. We used to have all these great musicians. I'm not talking, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going down the Yankee zone, but you know what? It's true. They were such wonderful programs. And again, yeah. are we going too fast? for the kids yeah 
Well, we, not, we come back to that, don't we? That uh, I, I I do because I think it's 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 sad. I mean, my kids loved polka dot door. Yes, and I know uh, that you show were well. you were the you were you were the marigold and bear jiggler, were you? I was well. I was the first host on the polka. You were the first host. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was nineteen seventy or seventy one, and uh, and then I also did the second season, and then they decided they wanted to go with uh, different hosts mm-hmm. um, and do a variety of hosts after that. But they, I got and to they, the they first were all good. Years. They were all great. Uh, yeah. You have to talk about polka roo. <laughs> oh, Pokaroo. Yes. I, you know, all of a sudden someone would disappear from the set and on would come Pokaroo. We always right. figured that person was in Pokaroo's cause. Co- was that Pokaroo? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> when I did it, yeah, say the male host would be there. I would say, oh, you know, Gordon or Alex or whoever. I think you know, I hear. Go, I, I have to I have to go and uh, check on something, you know. And then all of a sudden the pokeroo would come in. Uh, the pokeroo, mystery. pokeroo. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I don't know. I didn't really like wearing a costume. Everybody, every you know, and some days I would remain and the male host would go and he'd have to come back and wear the costume. And it just amazed me so much that ultimately he became the mascot for all of TV Ontario. He was one. <laughs> Hey, listen, I let my kids watch Pokeroo, but I did not let them watch Barney because I thought Barney had a bad touch feeling. Pokeroo was just lovely. Yeah. So I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, pardon me. I, yeah, I, I never <laughs> liked Barney. I thought that was too weird. <laughs> anyway, different. speaking of weird, we got to go to <laughs> in your weird, weird and wonderful life. We have to go to some weird and wonderful um little uh, break here and uh, we'll come back and I'm going to play a song by Ori Dake and Mother Hubbard and we'll continue on with our talk and then we'll be out. Okay. So here we go. It goes so fast. I know. I know. <laughs> we'll have to have you on again. Here we go. Break. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas 1610 AM. A drink of water. She went to the cupboard to get her poor doggy a bone When she got there, the cupboard was bare So the poor little dog had none He sat on the mat with his head on the mat He was so hungry he wanted to cry But he wagged his tail and he barked And he looked Hubbard straight in the eye Doggone Said the little that ain't no way to do If you were hungry and wanted a bone I'd find one somewhere for you So old mother but she closed up the cupboard And went out into the street The little dog moaned If you can't get a bone, hover yeah. Bring me some meat do ba be be ba 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 da do ba ba yo ba 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 do ba 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 ba
buzzard, bring me that buzzard. Good boy. Good boy and good girl. We've got uh, Nina Keo and we've got Dr. Beryl Freud here in studio at CHHA 1610 AM. And uh, it's still 17 degrees and we're going to be going up, 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 up this week. Uh, got <laughs> the last, uh, last rose of summer is going to be happening. So Dr. Beryl Freud will be doing some comedy uh, gigs, I understand. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, I don't get any work. She gets all I was going to say, you know, yeah. you're, just, you're just the, what do they call the help? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she, I call her, she's my right-hand woman. <laughs> no, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, so um, Dr. Beryl, I've, I've been using her as a, as a character for um i don't know probably 15 years mm-hmm. and um at one point i did a medical conference with her right i did 3 days of stand up in a hospital in toronto for about 6000 doctors oh and my. um oh. it was really the most fun i think i've ever had because it was an internal um convention broadcast oh, oh yeah sorry. and oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry i thought it was a gynecology convention i'm sorry <laughs> It was a gastroenterologist. I'm, I'm back with the speculum. Yeah, I'm so right. sorry. I know. It's so easy to do. It's so easy to um, slip. <laughs> so th- these were uh, gastroenterologists, I think is the word. Okay. Internists. And, uh, y- something. Something. And uh, so they had all the best from all over the world, and they came. Wow. And uh, so what I was doing was between procedures that were happening in the hospital, they'd come back to me in between, and then I would just do my stand-up, and it was all medical medical stuff and references and so on. Right. And um, a lot of it was improvised, and I, it was just so much fun. And I, I worked with a monitor, which puppeteers always do. Yes. Had a monitor, a camera person. Uh, the director was in the truck, as we call it, which is the control room. Sure. S- sitting outside the hospital. Yep. And this was all going to a jumbotron in Vancouver, where no the 6,000 doctors were. So it it was really fun because I could hear the laughter coming back through my earphones. And um, it's always nice to get that live feedback and that immediate feedback, which is not what you get when you're doing television. No, not at all. You know. Um, So anyway, it it was great. And um, I've done a number of shows with her. I've written 40 minute shows with her that are, you know, have the local politics or um, I use people who are in the community where I am and put them into the script and so on. And uh, so it's been very popular. So mm-hmm. I've got a, I've got something coming up at Christmas. I've got something coming up in November for uh, as a, a fundraiser for an arts organization. Nice. Out in Warkworth, where I used to live. Yeah. And um, so that's fun. And then um, uh, something at uh, Bridgepoint uh, Hospital where I teach art. You do. Yeah. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. So. And, and people can go to... Uh, Facebook to Dr. Beryl Freud's fan page. I've just found it. It's easy to find. Dr. Beryl Freud fan page. Yeah. That's B E R Y L F R E U D apostrophe S fan, fan page. <laughs> and I see you even have the radio interview today. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's wonderful. So it's uh, <laughs> just go there and, and will things be posted there for what's coming up? I'm sorry, say that will again. Will you be posting on the fan page? About- yes. Okay. I will, yeah. I've got I've got three or four pages that I manage, so it's you know, you gotta keep up with them all. <laughs> well you've got you've got your uh you've got your web page actually. Let's talk about that a bit because you can be bought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently you can be bought. <laughs> My work can be bought. Your work yes. can be bought. Yes. So that's uh, that's whether you're your 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 the puppetry or the paintings. The paintings mostly. The paintings yes. mostly. The, the paintings, and yeah. Nina Keo dot Com. Right. So that's N I N A K E O G H dot com, Nina Keo dot com. And uh, yeah, go there and uh, you get to see all kinds of great pics from your, your career as well and some information there. So, oh, uh, wow. So, any, uh, we got about, um, about three minutes uh, and I'll give it to you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, she said no. <laughs> well, I, don't Phil, ask, I, don't, I don't usually ask what. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you can do it. <laughs> 
I know. Those <laughs> signals the floor director would give you. Like, yeah. oh, ah. like the, well, we could, if I start on another topic, we'll end up here for another hour. So I'm just thinking, you know. Well, it, Dr. Dr. Beryl had something. To, she said, what did you want to ask, Joyce? Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. Joyce, I hear you're a singer. Apparently, yes. Yes, so I am. So what? And we can see you down at some clubs in Toronto, can we? Not, not. Well, I was there. I was at the 120 last week, but it, it, they're few and far between. We got, I got to pay musicians, you know, and that. The, I got, I got to get audiences, so I, I can be bought as well. Yes, well, <laughs> we need to plug your career too, my dear. <laughs> what do you do for a living, though? <laughs> Private parties. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you, know. you do. I do. I'm sure you do a lot of a lot of private gigs. That's, <laughs> that's probably the, I, actually. I think the house parties. Hey, you know what? That'd be great for you to do some house parties yeah. too. With, with and roasts, roasts for people who are having a big birthday absolutely. or an anniversary or whatever. Oh my gosh, Dr. Beryl's straight for that. Yeah, because she does her research on people and she has props and. Oh, I bet she yeah, does. So, yeah. oh my goodness, she well, pops out of a cake. <laughs> oh, does she really? If you no. want her to. You know, she can be bought too. <laughs> she can be bought too. Oh my gosh. Nina Keo, the princess of puppeteering. <laughs> But we got to get She's you. She's no princess. Well, she is to me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh hush. Oh, she has a personal relationship with you that only she and you <laughs> understand. So we'll just leave That's it at that. Right. And I'm so happy we're able to come on board tonight, and so Thank glad you, that Joyce. we have this wonderful common uh, thread with Errol, and uh, yeah, who is a wonderful broadcaster. Yes, yes, and uh, who passed away last year, but who yeah. who lives on here. Uh, he does, he's our with his voice. His yes. voice is the announcer here yeah. for a drink of water and uh, I'd love to have you on again this be I should get you and Marla on one night oh my gosh <laughs> I think that I think the universe would employ oh what do you something. think Marla I know you're probably listening <laughs> probably th- <laughs> I don't know how that would look <laughs> anyway we're gonna go out now and uh, next week uh, there'll be some more drink of water and um, thank you so much for joining us listeners and definitely go to Nina Keo.com and uh, Dr. Barrel's fan page and thank you Joyce they can be bought <laughs> okay bye Ah, 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 ah.